for inviting me this morning. Anytime I get an opportunity to talk about our project, it's something that I, I relish. This is, uh, this is a big deal for us in, uh, in Ontario Power Generation. We're very excited about moving forward with the uh, refurbishment project, so a uh, good opportunity for, uh, for us to, uh, uh, to show our wares, to talk about how this project is going to move forward, to demonstrate that uh, a nuclear project can be done on time and on budget. Uh, those are very important to, uh, to us, to our board of directors, to the, uh, to the local community. Uh, to the province uh, and to, to all the ratepayers, uh, so it's it's very important that uh, we build this properly right from the ground up. It relies on having a good, stable workforce. It relies on having uh, the, the right vendors to to work with. It re re excuse me relies on the materials. There's a lot of pieces that have to come together to make this successful. No one group, no one organization, no one company is uh, is going to be delivering this. So. Uh, we're looking forward to, uh, to working with many of you in the room uh, in supporting us in, in getting this done. So with that, I'm going to tell you a little bit uh, about Darlington. Um, you may know this, but uh, uh, Darlington uh, has been around since, uh, since the early 90s. Uh, it, uh, they are our largest units in the fleet. They deliver the uh, 3,500 megawatts that, uh, that you see listed there. A uh, very important part of, uh, of the, the energy that uh, is produced in, uh, in this province comes from that plant just south of us. Uh, it is one of the best operating plants in the world. We're very proud of that. Uh, it puts us on probably the best platform of anybody ever having done a refurbishment that you're looking at. One of the best operating plants in the world. So I use the analogy if you know, somebody has given me the Ferrari, we're going to do some work on that Ferrari and we're going to give it back. We're not having to take a different car and trying to create a Ferrari. So we're very excited about how that plant operates every single day and it puts us in a path for success. The, uh, the output being 20% of Ontario is also critical. As we take down our units for refurbishment, uh, there's a big chunk of power that's going to be taken off the grid. So working along with the government to make sure that the, that the supply is there and then ultimately they're counting on us to deliver in the time frame that, uh, that we've been allotted. It's going to be very, very important because at times we're going to have two of our units offline. So it's very important that, that we have the right structure. Uh, probably the key to any success in a project like this is, uh, is the people. Um, without the people, we're not going to be able to maintain those plants and we're not going to be able to execute these, uh, this project. So having a, a very highly skilled workforce from the local area that supports the plant today is key going in because they're going to be shutting down the plant, they're going to be starting up the plant and they're going to be operating it for the next 30 years. So it's very important that we have an existing workforce and at the same time then looking to the broader community to see where are the people are going to come from uh, to be able to work with our vendors and our contractors to be able to execute, which is what's going to be a, a massive undertaking for us. We, uh, we believe strongly and uh, have support from uh, our board of directors and from the province that, uh, that this is an excellent candidate. Uh, I think if you work through all of the different activities that are happening at the Darlington site, and working with uh, the years of preparation that we're putting in before we shut down our first plant uh, really puts us in a, a very strong position to, uh, to make this a successful project. That site that uh, is below us is, is going to change and I'll show you some of the pictures and some of the things that we're going to do uh, to ensure that uh, we're successful going forward. Uh, adding on a workforce that's virtually the same size as the workforce we have here takes a significant amount of, uh, of changes and in infrastructure to make sure that we're successful. As you drove down, you probably saw some of it that's already going in with the sewer and water lines that, uh, that are being installed um, down Park Road. And if you were at uh, uh, Holt Road, you'd see the similar work going on there. So a lot of things going on that uh, I'll explain shortly. So why refurbish Darlington? Um, the can-do technology requires a midlife, uh, midlife refurbishment. So we're coming to the, to the mid-operating life of our Darlington plant. And so through this refurbishment, we'll be able to deliver a number or another 30 years of uh, operation. 
they're large units. Uh, being in the you know net or gross megawatts of 935, when when you look at that, the economics make sense uh, for the spends that uh, that uh, are going to happen on the refurbishment project. So it's an important part of the mix and, and gives us the ability to uh, to really have that benefit uh, from a, from a cost of power going forward. We have a good strong nuclear safety culture. I mean, we are in the nuclear business. Uh, it goes without saying that safety is number one in everything that we do and how we operate, how we function, and how our project is going to be managed going forward. So that is a cornerstone of our business. It always has been and will continue to be. Um, it really is a, a big part of the long-term energy plan for, uh, for the province. And so being part of that plan is, uh, is key to uh, making sure that we're delivering that job on time, on budget. And, uh, and we think that uh, the normally 3,500 megawatts that, produced, uh, that are produced at the Darlington plant are clean energy and can be a huge driver for, uh, for this area and for this province for, for many, many years. What's in the refurbishment project? Looks like a lot of stuff. It is a lot of stuff. Uh, it's a daunting task when you when you think about the, the actual size, the enormity of taking uh, four nuclear plants offline and working through uh, what is going to be a massive construction undertaking uh, for some 10 years, uh, eight to 10 years in the field. But some of the things that we're looking at, um, and you'll hear from uh, Brian shortly to talk about uh, what is and what we consider is our critical path. So we've designed our our outage, we've designed the work that we're doing around this particular piece because it is by far the most complex and the biggest part of our project. And I'll, I won't steal Brian's thunder from, uh, from explaining it, but uh, it's, a, it's an exciting piece. So that's where we're replacing the pressure tubes, the calandria tubes, and the feeders. And you'll see that um, that work is, uh, is probably about half of the work that we're going to be doing. Um, managing and upgrading our uh, turbine generator systems, our fuel handling systems. There are a number of regulatory projects that, uh, that we are doing as well as part of our environmental assessment and, and our safety reviews. There are some things that, uh, that we've decided that uh, should be done during the refurbishment as well. The balance of plant uh, rehabilitation. Uh, so each one of these major chunks has a project director uh, working with me. Um, and unfortunately, the gentleman in charge of the balance of plant is the person at the end of that, uh, at the end of the road. So everything that doesn't fit in one of those other projects fits in balance of plant. So uh, from a complexity standpoint, it is by far the most complex because it includes a little bit of everything everywhere in the plant. So that is uh, one of the areas if you look at major refurbishments or any work going forward that typically comes back to be the most difficult piece. It's everywhere. It has, it's like the, the spider web that goes all over the place as opposed to in some of the other projects that are fairly well contained and people can work at them. So a big part of organizing how we do balance a plant, recognizing from the industry, we've been very, very fortunate that, uh, that the flow of information at the project level between the different groups that have done refurbishment, whether it was the Pickering units one and four that, uh, that we did uh, years ago, uh, working with uh, our colleagues at Bruce Power, uh, Point La Pro, uh, we've had the ability to uh, to talk to, and I visited myself uh, the Wilson site in South Korea, to be able to get that experience and make sure that we don't relearn the lessons again. Absolutely critical in this business that we work, we learn, we move forward, as opposed to let's recreate the wheel all over again. So a lot of work that's been done there. The infrastructure support piece. Um, when you're talking about adding another 2,500 people, when you're talking about the amount of equipment, the amount of work that's going to happen, uh, if we came through the existing operating site, we would, we would lose our focus. So what we've decided to do is the one side of our, our site is going to remain for the operations side of the business, and on the west side, which is just below us here, is what we've going to transform into being the refurbishment side of, uh, of the plant. So all access will happen through this side. All of this area will be turned into parking lots, and there will be buildings to be able to support the refurbishment. 
Uh, ultimately, we'll take all those down and put the land back to its, uh, its current condition. But for the next 15 or so years, there's going to be a big change that happens uh, just outside our door here. So I talked about a 15-year mega project. Probably one of the most difficult things I've had as I've gone around the country and the world talking to different people about projects is projects typically in most people's minds and all people's minds have a start and a finish and it's defined and it's usually fairly short and compact. You get in, you get out, you do what you had to do. Uh, here we're going to have something that's going to last some 15 years and we're going to do it four times. So it's, it's a little bit different in the, in the process in terms of how that's going to happen. We are bringing, um, and our vendors are bringing, uh, some of the most highly skilled uh, individuals, engineers, technicians, trades, all types of different people to bear on this project. So we feel that, uh, that the, the individuals and the companies are out there to make us successful. So we're very excited <laughs> about that and what it brings to, uh, into the region. Uh, I tried to get my head around this. The very first time when I uh, took the job back in 2010 trying to see, well, how really big is a project of this size? And uh, we worked it out that we expect that there are somewhere in the neighborhood of 30 million man hours of field work. 30 million man hours of field work. Uh, a, a normal process has somebody working less than 2,000 hours a year. So 2,000 going into 30 million, that's a lot of work. That's a lot of man years. So it's very exciting and it's, uh, it's a lot of work ahead of us. It goes without saying that safety is, will remain throughout the entire job. We review it already, trying to set the standards and the, the safety culture that we expect, both of ourselves and anybody that's working on our site. Uh, it goes without saying that quality, we have to do the job right the first time. There isn't going to be a second time. If we don't get this first unit done right, um, there's a high likelihood that uh, the, the remaining three units may not be done. If we cannot show and demonstrate uh, that this job can be done properly, uh, our shareholder uh, has told us that uh, we're at risk for the other three units. So it's extremely important that we do this first one right. Uh, cost and schedule, uh, nobody is going to uh, appreciate the fact that, uh, that it was done, that it was well over budget. and and years late, so there's a lot of importance that's, uh, that's put on those as the, the cornerstones for our success. 2015 is a very important date for us. Uh, at that time, our release quality estimate, our release quality schedules, those will be published, uh, we'll have, and that, that's what we'll be held accountable for to deliver uh, to our board as well as uh, to the province and our shareholders. So uh, 2015 is a very important time in uh, in the project. So just, uh, and there's a, there'll be a test afterwards. <laughs> they'll be asking me to read the fine print. And uh, well, I'm just kidding because I don't know if I can read it from here. But um, we started off in the initiation phase. So uh, before we could determine that this was a value proposition to us and to the province, we did a lot of work to make sure that the project uh, stood on its own that we knew what we were getting into, we knew what work had to be done, and that, uh, that we could build an overall cost estimate for where the, the ranges are that we thought that the project would fall into. In 2010, we got approval to move forward, and uh, pretty much where we are today in 2012, moving through the detailed planning process. We brought some of, uh, uh, and Brian I'll speak to, one of our major contracts on board, a uh, number of other contracts that we're working on as well going through and making sure that uh, we have regulatory stability. We need to understand what the regulator is going to be asking such that there are no changes through the life of the project. It's very important. You can appreciate that if there was a change that was introduced in between somewhere, you got a situation changing designs, reordering materials, installation rework. There's all kinds of things that can happen that can take these kinds of projects off track. So getting that stability and scope, getting that stability and what the regulatory requirements are. All of the infrastructure work will have to be done. So all buildings, roads, changes that we're going to introduce to be ready for a 2016 shutdown of, uh, of Unit 2 all have to be done uh, in that time frame. So by the end of 2015, we'll be there. We'll also be starting to hire 
for the uh, the trades as we start to train people and get people involved in the project. So there's a massive uptake that happens over the next few years. And then from 2016 to 2024 is, uh, is when we go through the refurbishment cycle of all four units. And so nominally there'll be an overlap of the units. Uh, we haven't finalized exactly what that's going to look like. It'll be done uh, by 2015 as well. Uh, but uh, to, to get economies of scale and make sure we don't lose the workforce and we uh, don't lose our vendors with a lot of downtime, we'll be structuring the units such that, uh, that there's that continuity of, uh, of employment. At the same time, we're working with, uh, with the government to make sure that, uh, that that meets the power demand requirements <coughs> of the problem. So a number of, uh, a number of things happening as we choreograph the, uh, the outages coming up. So a few things, uh, key things that have happened uh, since the uh, February 2010 announcement. Um, one of the things is really putting the organization together. So the critical aspect of this is having the right project management organization. Ontario Power Generation is the operator. We will be the overall project management integrator of this project. We will maintain that throughout its life. Um, and that is what we believe is one of the critical success factors is having an engaged owner that takes control and makes sure that, uh, that the things are happening on our schedule. Uh, establishing the major contracts, we're very proud of, uh, of having issued our first contract, our first major contract on March 1st of, uh, of this year. There was a big signing ceremony uh, with, the, uh, with our president and, uh, and senior people from both uh, SNC-Lavalin Nuclear and uh, Acon Industrial. They uh, combined to, uh, uh, to put together a joint venture to be able to support us. Uh, Brian is here to speak to uh, that work and, and what, uh, what that's going to deliver. But that basically set the stage for us. As our first major contract, the single largest part of the project, it was the most important one to get done. Uh, something that we've never done in the past, which is be able to get a contract developed and out the door uh, in that length of time. And uh, we were very proud that uh, we were able to uh, come to an agreement and start the project off on the right foot. So uh, that happened earlier this year. Going through the detailed planning, uh, detailed scoping, uh, anybody who's done projects understands that uh, if you don't understand the work that you're going to do before you get going, it's going to be a problem. You're going to have discovery work. You're going to have all kinds of other problems. You're not going to have the right parts. You're going to have people standing around waiting for things. So we're spending a lot of time making sure that we understand the work, we understand the needs, and working with the right vendors to make sure that, uh, that we're prepared for, uh, for that first shutdown. By the end of, or at the time of first shutdown, we'll have spent about four full years into the planning cycle. No one has ever taken that much time. Everybody that we talked to after the fact said, if I only had had more time to plan. We were very fortunate in being able to implement our project and have that length of time to work with the right vendors to make sure that we're going to be successful. Very proud of, and probably on your drive here, you saw one of, uh, one of our first buildings go up, the Darlington Energy Complex. Uh, I went by, as I'm the, uh, all of the work that happens in the field happens uh, uh, in my organization. So having the Darlington Energy Complex, I'm what we call a project sponsor. So it's one of the things that ultimately I'm accountable for. And I drove by it again today just, just to get another look and you see the enormity of the thing. And it's absolutely incredible that, uh, that it's moving as, uh, as well as it has. And again, one of, uh, one of the vendors that uh, we've worked with before, uh, McKay Cocker, uh, is, uh, is putting up that building for us and, uh, and it's going extremely well. It is the cornerstone. Uh, very shortly, uh, the, when, uh, when completed and turned over next, next year, around July, uh, we'll, start to, uh, we'll start to see another transformation of the building. So and we'll explain that in a couple of minutes. A couple other pieces of it, uh, going through the environmental assessment, uh, an important part of uh, any project like this. So uh, working through that, uh, that EA is, uh, is part of it. And the integrated safety review. Both of those things are basically to, to uh, review the plant, review what, what's going to happen as part of refurbishment, and to assure ourselves, because first we have to assure ourselves 
And then obviously going through and making sure that the regulators, the public, and everybody else is as confident as we are. So going through those, uh, those particular items, um, we, uh, we will have our second hearing um, later, this, later this month, or sorry, early next month. I'll talk a little bit more about the uh, November 13 and 14 dates. And again, a real opportunity for those um, in the area to participate. We'd love uh, to get uh, people in the area to participate. We did uh, take the ISR through and submitted it to the CNSC, which is doing its final review, but, uh, but very clearly from, uh, from that work, the Darlington site does meet the codes and standards uh, of uh, the modern codes and standards. And so we're very fortunate again to start off with a plant that's in uh, good condition as, uh, as Darlington is. So what's going to happen? Uh, as I mentioned, the, uh, the Darlington Energy Complex in July of, uh, of 2013 will be turned over to, uh, to OPG. And at that point, we'll go through. Um, in fact, it's, it's Brian's team that will be installing a full-scale mock-up through the travels. Um, when I first took on the position, one of the things that every project said was, if you can build a mock-up that's identical to your reactor, you can practice, you can practice, and then if you have more time, you can practice everything that's going to be performed, every, every activity, uh, every change. And so what we've built, or what, uh, what the, uh, the, the joint venture of uh, SNC Acon are going to build for us is an identical replica of our reactor, dimensionally correct. Not functioning, of course, but dimensionally correct such that as they move equipment around, as they're testing on different areas, that they actually get the feel for what it's going to be like to work in our reactor building. Absolutely critical. That's what everybody told us to do from everywhere that we visited. And so we were able to recreate that in that building. Uh, south of that as well is going to be some storage so that the feeder pipes and tubes, things that we'll be using directly on the refurbishment will be right next to us. And then in front of it will be uh, the new information center and, uh, and about 450 offices. So a lot of things going to happen there. I mentioned the key date. Uh, in 2015, at that point, we are going to demonstrate, we're going to put forward what the final costs will be and what the final schedule will be. So we're, we're uh, anticipating that moving. It looks a lot better than this in real life. <laughs> it doesn't do it justice. Uh, and, uh, but, uh, but it is a 300,000 square foot facility. You'll see the different things that I talked about. Uh, that front portion is where um, uh, is where the offices will be. That middle white section is where the, the mock-up and training center. And then at the back, there'll be some storage for, uh, for some of our equipment. Some of the things that, uh, and the reason behind the training, uh, we were very fortunate uh, to develop that Calandria Vault inspection arm uh, with the company, in fact, that uh, actually designed the cadet arm for, uh, for NASA. Um, a more impressive facility and piece of work I, I don't think I've seen in my life in terms of the technology that, uh, that went into this thing. So it's absolutely incredible. Again, if we don't have a place to practice using it, it makes it difficult. What you don't want to do is shut down your reactor, you're not making electricity, and now you're doing your testing. So we have the ability with, uh, with what we're installing in the uh, Darlington Energy Complex to be able to test everything before we start. And it's critical because uh, when we get to the fall of uh, 2016 and Unit 2 comes offline, we're going to have to jump into it running. There is no time to start testing and, and working through that process. What you see here is um, the work that Brian's going to do. <clears throat> so that thing on the left side there, all of those pipes, so the, the, the darker piece in the middle is the calandria. And the pieces around the outside are what are called the feeder tubes. And uh, Brian gets to remove all of those and then reinstall new ones. The, inside the calandria, there are 480 tubes. And he gets to remove all of those and reinstall new ones there as well. So a huge amount of work that happens in a relatively small space. So a lot of things that, that, that have to happen. And it really is. It's, uh, if, uh, if you're a fan of ballet, I think we take this to the next level in terms of how it's choreographed and how the different movements happen. It's, uh, it's absolutely outstanding, the work that's going to happen. 
I mentioned some of the other things that are going to happen, but to get to those big projects, we're going to have to do some things like islanding, which is we have an operating unit in the midst of, uh, or sorry, a shutdown unit in the midst of uh, two or three operating units, and we really have to figure out how to island that. To be able to give the work to each of our vendors to do, they have to be able to know that within this boundary is, uh, is where I'm going to be working. And so that islanding project takes on a massive change. And some of the other plants that we visited that were one unit uh, didn't have that as, a, as one of their issues because the, once the one unit is offline, there were no other things that have to happen. But we have, and we have to maintain the exact same operating standards that we have today on those operating units. They cannot be impacted by the refurbishment. So a lot of work has to happen in terms of how do we separate the work that we're going to do from the operating units. Very important. Shutdown and layup. If, uh, if there's anything that we learned, it's start with the end in mind. So we've determined what the end state of everything in that plant and what we want to end up with, how we want to end up with it, what the documentation is going to look like, how it's going to be done, and that's you start working backwards. And at that point, you know that you're going to get what you asked for. And so it's very important that we start with the end in mind. The little project that we've tied on to the end of that, the services project, it's amazing the amount of power, <coughs> water, air that's required to run a job of this size. So it's actually a little factory in terms of the amount of work that's going to be created, the amount of megawatts that are actually going to be used as we go through this project. So a lot of work has to be done in organizing that. And if you can appreciate that um, it's, a, it's a power plant, and so I get a lot of questions, well, electricity, electricity surely can't be a problem for you. It is. Go to a plug somewhere, and plug in whatever you have to. It's a power plant. Well, it's not quite that easy, and that, uh, and that the power plant is designed to produce electricity that we sell, not necessarily to power a bunch of stuff that we have internally. So a lot of work has to go into preparing for how you're going to get those services to where we need them in our project. And at the same time, you know, those other plants are operating and they're going through their normal outage cycle. So you plug into something that somebody else is going to shut down very shortly. And then I get my phone call from the contractors to say, where'd my electricity go? And uh, so a lot of work has to go into the planning behind how we're going to provide the services just to get a job of this magnitude done. Because a normal a nominal outage duration will be somewhere in the three year range. So you're really talking about how do we set this up to be able to last for about three years. We moved, the, the, when, uh, when we formed OPG from the old Ontario Hydro, um, things changed in terms of the amount of work that we were executing internally. So over the last few years, as, uh, as we've moved more towards this mega project model, we've determined that that the success path for us is, is working through the engineer procure construct model. So all of the work that you saw listed there on the, on the previous slides is going to be executed using that model through major contractors uh, that are going to be supporting us. OPG is going to provide the overall project management and integration. We're, we're going to be sort of a general contractor, if you will, that has a bunch of subs that are these major, major elements in the business. Our first one, and, uh, um, and not the only one, but the first in the, in the, the, the line is the SNC Lavalin and ACON uh, joint venture. The process uh, requires a, a higher level of engagement between the owner and the vendors to make sure that uh, both organizations are successful. It's not good if one is and one isn't, because ultimately we have four units to do. So if you're not both successful on the first one, it's going to be hard to continue that momentum on to the fourth one. So you really have to learn to work together. Uh, so it does drive that continuous improvement. And one of the things that's key in all of our contracts, and because we are uh, Ontario Power Generation and we are owned by the province, is the transparency issue. We want to make sure that there is transparency in our contracts. We want to make sure that there's transparency in the things that we do so that we can demonstrate the project, how successful it was, uh, where the costs went. Very, very important uh, part of the structure of all of our contracts. It really is around risk. And so by going to this model, uh, we are looking for the vendors to come and join us and take part of the risk. 
We ultimately own all of the risk as the owner, but uh, we needed to find contractors that want to work with us, that put some of their, uh, some of their profits on the line, uh, because that demonstrates their interest in our job and it demonstrates their willingness to commit to the schedules, to the costs, to the processes that we've all put forward. So it's a big change for us. It's a big change for anybody working with us uh, in the nuclear business. And we're very proud of, uh, of having our first contract set up that way. So we know, it's, you know, we know it can be done, and now we're counting on everybody else to join in as, uh, as we finish off uh, the, the next contracts. I talked about infrastructure just to give you a feel for the amount of changes that are happening. So uh, on the retube and feeder replacement side, there are a number of things that, that have to be constructed to be able to execute that job. So there's uh, a number of facilities to, uh, to manage work inside, uh, inside the protected area, so inside the major fence that you see. Uh, we're building a new heavy water storage building uh, because as you can appreciate, to, to do what we're going to do, we're going to defuel the reactor, we're going to take all the parts out, so the water that's in there has to go somewhere. And so we're building a, a, a detool uh, storage building that uh, actually will be able to remain with the plant uh, for the next 30 years as well to, uh, to help it operate. Um, storage facilities, the, uh, the, the West Security Office Change Room Lunchroom Building, that's a critical entrance into the site uh, where everyone will come through that's working on the refurbishment project and becomes one of the key focal points for how we're going to get people to work, what's going to happen, where do they change. Uh, very important part of any project. Uh, one of the very first things that I was told was um, a number of folks that I, I got to sit down with as I talked uh, often about this project and, and they asked me, what do I think is one of the major uh, issues for the people working on your job. Anybody have any idea what that major issue for me needs to be? Toilet. I'm sorry? The toilets. The, that's part of it. Communication. Food, communication, part of it. Parking. parking. Whoever said parking? <laughs> Good answer. Wow. Parking. How do I get to, how do I get, where do I put my car and then how do I get to my job? And then how do I get into my car and go home? Parking was the single largest issue that was raised to me. And so one of the things that you'll see around the structure that we've done is we've listened. We've listened to the issues around food and communication. We've listened to the issues around how do I get in and out of my job. And we're putting up a massive parking lot. So what you see today, this energy information center, is actually going to be one of the buildings that I'm going to take over after we move this group into, uh, into the new structure. This will become one of my local training areas and uh, this area that you see on top becomes a massive 1800 um, car parking lot. Another 500 car parking lot below and along the lake another two or three hundred parking spaces as well. So a huge amount of stuff happens around the infrastructure to be able to make sure we're ready to execute this and one of the fun things is maybe keeping the people happy that are going to do the work. A novel concept. Can we get a go train tracking here? Can we get a go train? Uh, unfortunately, I'm not accountable for the go train. I think some of our local representatives that uh, were here uh, may be better uh, suited to, uh, to answer that question. Good question, though. So this is what the site looks like. It's a plan view from on top. And so everything that you see in color there is going to change. So there's a massive amount of work, uh, whether it's uh, the pink work on the, uh, on the left side that uh, is very specifically around the uh, refurbishment work. Um, the green has a lot to do with uh, work that uh, is in support of refurbishment, but also the long-term operation of the plant. Uh, yellow is stuff that is going to be demolished and removed. To, uh, to allow for new buildings and new infrastructure to go in. So a significant amount of work that's going to be happening over the next four years uh, at this site. So a lot of infrastructure work going to be created and going to have to be done. I wasn't kidding when I talked about the people. Uh, it isn't possible to, uh, to succeed in this type of work, uh, maybe argue any type of work, uh, without having the right people on the job. Uh, having the right project management skills and 
having the right engineers working on the, on every job is uh, is critical. Um, whether it's uh, the, the workers that we have here in nuclear operations, um, but uh, but the key for uh, for the refurbishment work, the actual physical execution, is uh, is the building trades. Uh, there is going to be a significant uh, increase in building trades uh, at our site. And you can see, I apologize because I'm sure I've missed somebody that uh, is going to be critical to, uh, to our success in that list. But, uh, but it is all of the unions that, uh, that support us in the local area that uh, will be part of this project. I like showing this picture because when you look at and, and we talk about the, the work that's going to happen, and then we see that the people, uh, what they have to wear and what positions they have to be in to be able to execute this work. It is a very, very difficult task that we ask these people to do. And uh, they've done it for 100 years in supporting OPG. And, uh, and we're looking forward to that uh, level of excellent support uh, again as we move forward. Just to give you a feel for uh, some of the vendors that we already have in place, I think this is probably finally getting to something that is more interesting to you. Um, we have, as I mentioned, McKay Cocker that's, uh, that's completing the uh, Darlington Energy Complex, uh, Black and McDonald uh, and their team, uh, as well as ES Fox uh, is doing a lot of our infrastructure work, getting ready. They'll also be supporting us on the balance of plant work uh, here at the site. Uh, Can Do Energy, Worley Parsons, uh, AMEC NSS, uh, all uh, excellent engineering organizations that have been a big part of, uh, of preparing and, and getting ready the scope of work that we have to do, uh, as well as the, uh, the GE, GE Hitachi Corporation that uh, <coughs> has been instrumental in, in helping us develop the, the scope of work, uh, and they'll be working with us going forward. Uh, over the next 18 months, the, uh, the contracts for turbine generators, fuel handling, and steam generators will be, uh, will be awarded. Uh, and at that point, that pretty much is the end. That'll have all of the work compartmentized into one of those major contracts. And at that point, uh, we really move into the full-scale detailed planning and all parts of, uh, of the refurbishment project. Talk about the success factors. Um, starting off with the top performing plant uh, is critical. Anybody who's done renovation work, this is like a, a huge job, huge renovation work. And when you start off with a 100 year old house versus, I was going to say five year old, but I've seen some of the five year old houses. Let's take it back to say maybe 15 year old house in terms of what you get, what you're starting off with, what you know to be there, what the codes and standards of the times are. So you're starting off with a better product. product. It's easier to do that renovation. It's easier to get back on. Uh, track record of success. Uh, we, we test drove a couple of the ideas that we're talking about at the most recent vacuum building outages at Darlington and Pickering. Uh, the Unit 2, 3 safe storage project at Pickering used a lot of the model that uh, we're going to execute uh, here. And the uh, upper metogamy project, uh, a hydro project, is, um, is absolutely 100% being done as an EPC owner uh, driven contract. And so a lot of successes that we've had in the corporation most recently that set us up to understand what we're getting into. Um, I talked about the planning. Uh, I don't think I will ever say to anybody there's that uh, I'm finished planning or I've had more than enough time to plan. That will never happen. Uh, at least in my career, at these four years, every single day we're, we're, we're cherishing every single day because you don't get it back. And so this is a very important time for us. And then really, if uh, it all revolves around having the right team in place. One of the things uh, that uh, you can become complacent, it's very easy to become complacent. I have lots of time to plan. I'm better than everybody else. I know more than everybody else, and uh, we're not letting ourselves get into that uh, frame of mind. We're continuously uh, speaking to our peers in this industry and other industries, learning from the oil and gas, pharmaceutical, uh, heavy construction industries. We're looking across North America and outside of North America for what are the best practices and how to do this work. So we're not going to sit back and say that we know enough, uh, because I just think that that'll put us in that bad frame of mind. 
the contractors and the resourcing, uh, clearly that's, that's, a, that's a key to our success as we'll be driving all work through, uh, through our vendors. And ultimately, without the community support that we get uh, for the Darlington plant, uh, none of this would be successful. We need that support from the local community uh, and the extended community to be able to be successful. And we're very proud to be uh, in the Durham region. I mentioned earlier the public hearing. You know, whether it's, uh, regardless of your views, it's important that we have participation in that hearing. Uh, we need to make sure that, uh, that everybody understands what we're going to do, how we're going to do it, why we're going to do it. So an excellent opportunity for, for us as, uh, as local residents and, and people that work in the industry uh, to provide a voice uh, on the 13th and 14th of, uh, of November. We're going through three things there. The Darlington Refurbishment Environmental Assessment will be, uh, will be one of the items. The relicensing of our plant and uh, as well as the relicensing of our, uh, our waste uh, management facility. So we encourage you to, uh, to participate. So with that, I'll come to an end. Let's turn it back over. Now I'm not trying to kick you off, Mark, because I'm sure everybody is buzzing and has a lot of questions for you. Uh, what we're going to do is have Brian come up, and then both of you together, we'll, I'll ask you to come back up, and then we'll have a, a discussion and a proper Q.